Coral Island. This reimagined farm sim game will have a very large map reaching far beyond what we have been shown to date. For perspective, this snapshot of the map encompasses no more than this portion of Starlet Town. Even further, the island likely expands far beyond the town, according to what we've seen on this older version of the diving map. Not to mention the underwater open world and the undiscovered land we may reach via island hopping. So with all this ground to cover, how exactly will it be possible to explore and traverse it on a day-to-day -day basis? Today, I'm hoping to help answer this very question. First off, before we discuss movement mechanics, mounts, fast travel, and more, I believe it's worth the reminder that we will have the option to slow down the in-game clock. I think this will be a must for those of us who have plans to wander off the beaten path and really explore the map. So definitely keep this in mind. Now, in early game, we will likely be starting off with very little unlocked, and we'll be relying on nothing more than our player's movement mechanics to traverse the map. Luckily, we have a little bit more than just the basics accessible to us, as our player will be able to not only jog, but also sprint, and even dash. I think it's fun to note that we will be able to choose between several jogging styles for our character, which I imagine we will likely select in the character customization portion of the game. Although this won't add any measurable benefits to our player, it will be really nice to make our character even more our own. While I'm fairly certain we will be able to sprint from the very beginning of gameplay, I do wonder whether we will also start off with the dash mechanic or if this will be an unlockable perk on the skill tree, perhaps associated with either foraging and exploration or mining and combat. I also wonder whether the dash will consume any stamina upon use or if we can dash away across the island to our heart's content. Further, I'm curious to see if there will be a skill that we can level up to increase our overall movement speed for jogging and sprinting. I have seen this successfully implemented in other games, and it is always a skill I personally tend to go for early on, as I find it very useful. Another feature that could be implemented in this game to help boost your speed would be offering benefits for certain foods, like coffee for example, that would temporarily boost your speed upon Upon consumption, or applying similar benefits to different wearable items that would only impact your character when that item is equipped, like speedy boots, for instance. Another element that will most likely save you time in this game is the fence vaulting feature, so your player can actually jump over the fences that you place on your farm. This will help reduce the time you spend navigating your farmland without detracting from any aesthetics. So you can design your farm with as many pretty fences as you'd like, and your player can just hop right on over them without any fear of sus chicken making a break for it. There are also some movement mechanics that will help speed up the completion of your farming tasks, which in turn will give you more time to explore. Now, from my understanding, this will differ slightly depending on whether you are playing on PC or console. On PC, you will have access to mouse-based controls, so you can easily stand in the center of a plot of eight crops and quickly interact with all surrounding tiles from that spot. If you are playing console, then you might find strafing a useful feature, as you will be able to sidestep to more easily and accurately aim at each tile before carrying out various farming actions. Now, even if you max out your speed, fill up on coffee, and sprint and dash your way around the map, there will be many instances where you'll have to travel a long distance in a short amount of time. You may also find yourself in a situation where you need to get to the other side of the map just to complete one simple quest, or maybe you forgot something at your farmhouse and you're on the complete other side of the island. Do you want to run the entire way there and back? Do you even have time to? This is where the fast travel system will come in handy. We don't yet know how early in game this feature will be accessible, but we do know that as you progress through the game, you will unlock tokens that will be used to activate various teleportation spots around the map. In this shot of the fast travel map, we can see various teleportation spots around the island, specifically at our farm, near the caverns, by the diving pier, next to Sam's general store, 
and at the Lake Temple. These may be some of the most useful spots to unlock as we will likely be visiting these areas quite frequently. However, I'm sure there will also be many more to further unlock. The map also indicates that the player has two travel power available, which makes me wonder whether we will be limited to the number of fast travel trips we can take. If this is the case, do we have a daily limit that automatically resets the next morning after we go to bed? Can we accumulate or collect points over time? And if so, how? Also, since fast travel is sort of magical in nature, I wonder if any of the Coral 3 will be playing a part in in this system. I could also see it being incorporated into the town rank. What do you think? Now, it's also worth considering that there may be a lot you could potentially miss when using fast travel, like valuable items to forage, the opportunity to bump into your favorite NPCs, the experience of enjoying the surrounding wildlife, and perhaps even witnessing random events on your travels. The perfect middle ground solution between fast travel and traversing the map on foot is the implementation of mounts, which are confirmed to be in the game. So far, we've only been officially introduced to this trusty steed that we will be able to acquire. However, we must first build a stable for our horse companion before for enjoying the benefits of increased movement speed. I think it would be nice if there were several different options for the horses, different colors of coat, for example. And I also think it would be a nice touch if we could even customize the saddle. Beyond horses, I think it's fairly safe to assume that we will be offered additional options for mounts. In fact, based on this artwork of Theo, I think we might be able to expect these scooters in the game as well. I would also love to see a pedal bicycle, perhaps complete with with a basket that our future pet can ride in to accompany us on our journeys. But what mounts would you like to see in Coral Island? Although I'd prefer not to see many cars or vehicles on Coral Island, we do know that Ben has his van that he lives in and sells from, while Emma has a taco truck to serve delicious food. I could envision other cute food trucks and such that would come and go depending on the season or occasion, and honestly, I would love that. One other land vehicle I would accept as an addition to the game would maybe be an option to bring us to the upper portion of Coral Island, perhaps a bus or a van, or will the hot air balloons come into play here somehow? I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I could also see Pufferfish bringing a few of their own vehicles to the island, but as I said, I would personally prefer minimal land vehicles, and I definitely wouldn't want one myself. I do, however, think we can expect a fair number of water transportation options. The developer diaries have noted a number of redacted boats, and while I imagine that many of these will belong to the various characters on Coral Island, I feel as though we can expect to utilize at least one or two of them ourselves. It is confirmed that we will work to restore an old boat before ultimately unlocking island hopping, so of course we will use that boat to access many of the other islands surrounding Coral Island. However, this feature will be coming much later down the line of development, so I really wonder what boats the team is working on now. Perhaps we can use a boat to visit the upper portion of the map instead of a land vehicle. Maybe we will visit one another's islands with boats, as I don't believe there will be any sort of airport like us Animal Crossing New Horizons players are so familiar with, so I think a boat would be a good fit for this. Maybe there will also be a designated boat to take us diving. And speaking of diving, how exactly will everything we've discussed today apply to the underwater world? Will our player have different swimming speeds or an underwater dash feature? Will our selected jogging animation impact our swimming style? One thing we do know is that we can upgrade our diving suit to reach deeper depths, so I wonder if we could also upgrade it in ways that will boost our speed. Will there be specific underwater movement mastery skills? Will there be underwater mounts or fast travel? There has been some speculation that the Coral Island Current will ultimately serve as a fast travel system system to get around the underwater open world, or maybe even to access the Merfolk Kingdom. However, this is an area of the game that we really can only speculate on, at least for now. Regardless, it is definitely interesting and exciting to think about. Well, there you have it friends, that was everything that we know so far about getting around Coral Island and how we will explore the world. Let me know what mounts you would like to see in the game. As always, I love hearing from you in the comments. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Jose, Mandy, Meredith, 
for Modis and Kuki, my Sunstone members. I love you all and thank you so, so much for your support. It really helps to make all of this possible and means the world to me.